Hey guys, welcome to my little paintbrush. I'm Miss Sarah, and today we get to paint this Highland cow. And I love this cow. She is so cute. I hope you have fun painting her with me today. We're gonna use a couple brushes. I have a large flat, a number six round, and a detail brush. You can use what works for you. I have a jar of water and a napkin handy. And then all my paint colors are laid out for me so I can easily get to them. I also have my white separated so they don't get contaminated all at once. Super important because you're gonna need a lot of white for this painting, okay? So be sure to separate it. All right, so let's start warming up with our flat brush. I'm going to put it in some water because acrylic paint needs water. So we always start with some. I'm gonna just shake it out there in my water, tap off my brush and I don't dry it on my napkin, I just keep the bristles damp, okay? And let's start with our background and get that filled in. I'm using a really light yellow. It's kind of a buttery yellow. So I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and mix it with a lot of white, just like this. And you can decide if you want it brighter, add more yellow to it, okay? If you want it softer, add more white. But I'm just gonna mix until I get the color I like best, which is very buttery, just like that. I'm gonna start at the top and we're just gonna fill in our canvas. I'm moving pretty quick, I'm keeping a steady pace. That's the beautiful thing with recordings. You can pause this, slow down, take your time. You don't have to go at my pace. This is all about you today and you enjoying the process as we go. So if you need to slow down, feel free to do that. And the nice thing with yellow though, is that if you accidentally paint inside your image at all, it's not a big deal. We can easily paint over it or you can also um, see your pattern through the paint because yellow is very transparent. I love using yellow for that purpose on the background. It's very forgiving. So don't worry too much about that. If you accidentally paint inside the image, it's all right. Okay, but we're just gonna go quickly around the top there, fill it in. We also like to paint the top of our canvas and our sides and bottom. As we go, we call it wrapping our canvas. So if you want to do that, go ahead and do it now while you're up there. And then I'm just gonna go right here between the horn and my ear. If you see that little spot, it easily gets forgotten. Okay, so I'm gonna fill that in as well on both sides. I have a little bit showing here, just a little triangle shape, right? So I'm gonna fill that in too. Then we're gonna come down and just paint right below the ear and around the hair. Just fill that in. And we're gonna move under the hair. Again, if you paint inside that hair, that's okay. This is just layer number one. We have lots more to do. Okay, so I'm just filling in my space. Be sure to get enough paint on your brush that you don't have any white pockets on your canvas showing because it sometimes takes a lot more paint to do that. Okay, oh, and water. If you need a little more water in your paint, you can do that and it'll fill those little pockets in faster. Okay, so now I'm gonna come to the other side and we're just gonna fill that in as well around our cow. She's so fun. I'm just gonna use the toe of my brush to paint into those tiny little places. If you don't know what the toe is, it's the tippy point of your brush. So if you turn it and use the tip of your brush, you'll be able to get into those smaller places easier without switching your brush out. There we go, so I'm gonna come up here between my flower and my leaf there. Fill all that in. Up and down. There we go. And that's it. There's our background. It's all on there for us, ready to go. And we're gonna just let it dry for a minute and work on something else, okay? So if you're not quite done, go ahead and pause the video. You can go ahead and keep working on it. I'm gonna rinse my brush and you can come back to me in a minute. We're gonna start mixing colors for our cow next. So I'm gonna start with the neck and the top of the ears. That's my darker shade for my cow. You, of course, can do any shade you want. 
My, because uh, I tilt my plate, all my colors just go everywhere. You can see that? It's okay. That's how we roll. Okay, so I'm going to now mix my shade from my darker part of the cow, which is the neck and the top of the ears here. Okay, and I wanted to do a little bit of a reddish shade for my fur. So I'm going to pick up some white here and move it to center my plate, and I'm adding brown to it. And with brown, it's also a very transparent color. So you have to remember um, to use some white. It's very important, okay? So I've got my brown shade here, and you could leave it just like this and roll, but I'm adding some pink to mine because I like to get a little bit of red into that, and pink does the job for me. So we're also going to use that pink for the flowers, but I'm just going to add that shade to my cow. I just love it. Just love a little, I think it's from my childhood, all of our, the cows around us had a little bit of a reddish shade to them. Okay, so I've got my brown ready. And just remember that when you put brown on, it does dry slightly darker. So you may want to just try it on your canvas and see if you like the shade before you keep going. Okay, but here we go. I'm just gonna fill this in. Nothing too complicated right now, nothing fancy. We're just filling in that space. For our cow. I do like to brush in the direction that my cow is standing. So in the direction of the neck, I'll be brushing up and down as much as possible, just so the brush strokes will give the illusion that that's where the hair is lying on my cow. Okay. Now there are times when you're going around the neck or the mouth and everything that you're going to need to obviously paint the other direction. That's okay. I just try for the most part to keep my brush going up and down in that direction as if I'm brushing my cow's hair. Okay, so I'm gonna brush up and around the mouth and around the hair along the edge of my neck and you can also reach down and paint the bottom of the canvas right here where the neck is if you would like. Here we go. And this brown might take two layers Brown sometimes does, so just keep that in mind. Um, you might have to put another layer on later, and that's okay. Just let it dry in between so it doesn't keep picking up your paint. That's one thing we tend to do. We think, oh, if I add a lot of paint, then it will cover it for me, and it just doesn't work that way. So you'll wanna make sure you take some time later to put another layer on. Okay, so I'm gonna also, now that I painted the neck, I always do this in chunks so that I can see my outline better. So once I do the neck, then I go up and I do my, the side of my face here on my cow, just next to the hair, okay? And you'll have to circle out the mouth right there because if you're using our paint kit, you don't have the outline on the top and that's okay. You just circle it out yourself right there wherever you imagine that that nose comes around, okay? Just like that. Now we're gonna reach up here and just paint the top of the ear brown as well all the way to the hair. So it comes just here under the horn and out. And again, I'm brushing out because that's the direction that my ear is lying. Okay, so I'm gonna brush that way as if I'm brushing the top of her ear with a hairbrush. There we go, just like that. And you can reach around and wrap the ear if you want to or just leave it. And then she just has a little bit showing over here in the flowers. Not a lot, but I just fill it in to give it the illusion that the ear is peeking out over there on the other side. So it's just a little triangle shape. I'll put that in as well, okay? There we go, perfect. And if it's dry, you can put another layer on there. If not, give it a minute, okay? I am gonna go ahead and paint mine because it is dry. So I can add that second layer on real quick. Up and down. And then I'm going to float my edges before my paint is completely dry. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. This is optional. For some of our younger artists, they're not gonna float. It just isn't necessary and it can be challenging and can take away from all of their hard work. So if they wanna try it, our younger artists can go for it, they can try it. If not, it's okay. It looks super cute just the way it is. And you're gonna add outlining, which will take care of that. Floating adds a little bit of a shadow. It's an extra 
extra little touch to your painting to give it some dimension. So for those that want to try it, you can do it with me. So I'm just leaving my brush full of that color for my cow, the darker shade. And then I'm going to turn it sideways and put just brown on the corner of my brush, just like that. It's just the solid brown, not mixed with anything, okay? And I'm gonna face that brown out towards the outside edge of my cow. I'm gonna follow it all the way down the neck. And you can see how it gives it just a little bit of shade there. Okay, just a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna do it on both sides. It acts as a shadow and just really draws attention to your cow. I'm gonna put it there. And then I'm also gonna follow under the nose to give it that shadow and dimension under the nose. I'm following it around. And then you, this also gives you the option not to outline. So we have artists that prefer not to outline their piece. And if you float it like this, or even some of our younger ones like to do this with um, a detail brush instead of outlining. So they'll go around it with the dark brown and that looks great. You can do that too. Okay. So there we go. I went ahead and just floated that and I am gonna float next to the hair as well, just a little bit to give it some shading. And then I'm gonna do it to the top of my ear, just like that, and the bottom. You can do it to the other side, but it doesn't matter a whole lot because it's gonna be hidden by flowers, okay? That's all I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush, let that dry, and let's mix our hair color. Now our hair and our nose are very similar in color. Um, but what I try to do is have my nose just slightly in between my hair color and the body of my cow. So if this is what I used for my cow's um, neck and ear and it's a darker shade, I'm just going to add a little white to that and use that for my nose. Okay, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and mix it with that color and it just changes the shade of the brown slightly just enough that I can paint the nose and it will be a little bit of a different color from the hair. But that way things just stand out for us. You can paint this nose any color you want. I have seen um, a cute pink nose or you could do it all black or brown, totally up to you. Um, again, brown is transparent so you can usually see the outline through your paint. But if you're worried about it, just carefully paint around the nose and the nostrils here. You wanna paint just around very carefully if you're worried about that, so you can see the outline. Just like that, and then I'm gonna paint the mouth right down here, fill that in. And again, we're gonna add some shading and everything here that will change it just a little bit and I do it once my paint is on there and it's dried just a minute but isn't completely dry. I like to float while my paint is still slightly damp so that it fades into my color. But I don't know if your nose needs another layer and if it needs another layer, give it, give it a minute to dry and then go back to it. And just make sure this has a nice, I try not to pick up my brush when I go around the bottom part there of the mouth. Okay, now there we go. We have that all ready to go. I'm gonna let it dry for just a minute and let's now do our hair color. So for the hair, I'm gonna do it even lighter. So I'm taking the same brown I used for the body of my cow. I'm gonna add a lot of white to it because I wanted the hair to be a lot lighter than the rest. Now save some of that nose color for later if you need another layer on that nose because you don't wanna try and match the color. So I'm going to save some of that for later, but I'm just adding white to that pile that I created for my cow. If you need to make more, just remember it's brown and pink 
and white, but a lot of white to get that really light shade for the hair. Okay, but again, I just added more white to it and I'm just gently changing the shade as we go. Now for this hair, I'm gonna start at the top and this is where you wanna pretend you are brushing out your cow's hair, okay? And as I come to a point, I turn my brush, so I'm brushing down, I turn my brush and I use the very, very toe of my brush at the very end. But if you don't get a nice point there, it's okay. We're gonna come back later with um, a detail brush and you can fix that. Right now, we're just gonna get the hair in here. So don't worry too much about that. Okay, and this is a leaf here that's gonna guide us later with our leaf shades, so feel free to just paint around that. Okay, and you do have a little hair showing here above your flower, so I paint right up against that. And then I'm gonna gently paint around all of my leaves or my petals and my leaves there, just so I have them for later. But again, I'm brushing in the direction that my hair is lying on my cow, as much as possible, right? So one thing that I do like to do is I'll paint around my petals like this first, then I go back and brush the cow hair in the right direction. This just makes it easier for me if I have it all painted like this and then I don't have to worry about it later. I'm gonna go around my petals. But having all those petals there is so nice because then you can just come back later and paint them without trying to fill in layers and layers of paint. There's a little brown showing right here next to your leaf, see that petal? And that leaf, so I fill in that little spot. It's easy to miss and if you miss it, it's okay. Just go back later and you can put the brown in there fairly easily. Okay, this hair just kind of swoops down. This hair is so fun. You can add even more to it than what I'm adding. It's very forgiving. It's just fun. It's just laying there on top of our cow's head without any real pattern. You can just swoop it however you want. Okay. But now that I went around my flowers, you can see that I can just go up and down and fill in that space, no problem. Kind of takes all the stress out of it. Just like that. And we're gonna swoop it around the nose. She's got some serious hair action going on here. Great, great style, you know? I wish I could do this with my hair and get away with it. We're gonna swoop it just like that and back up. Do it again on the next one. Just curl it off at the end. Isn't that fun? Just curl it off to have natural curls. Cammie and I are jealous of all those that have natural curls. Let me tell you. We have to use pounds of hairspray and a curling iron on the daily to get this. I'm gonna come around the nose at the top though. And we're gonna curl it off at the bottom too right there. Okay, then we're gonna add some low lights and some highlights to our hair. But, you know, if you need that other layer, you can do it. The nice thing with this hair though, is it has so much white in it that I don't really need another layer of paint. Plus I'm doing my low lights and highlights, which is gonna add more layers. So my hair is a little different than the rest of the cow. It's ready to go, you know? She has, she has style here. It's very easy. There we go, got our swoop happening. Make sure we have it all covered pretty evenly as much as we can. We've, taken, we've painted over all our pockets. Beautiful, right? Already looks great. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush and we're gonna add the low lights to the nose and the hair right now, together, okay? And you can see that I painted over all of the outlines on my hair, right? Because <laughs> I can see through it, I didn't use a whole lot of paint. If you're using a lot of paint and you have painted over all of that, 
You can retrace them in if you want or make it up as you go because I'll show you how to do that. We have our starting point with all of our curls, okay? So I'm going to float this. If you wanna use a, a line brush instead and just outline the low lights with a small brush, you can do that too, okay? I like floating, it's my thing, a lot easier for me, but some artists prefer using a line brush. But I've cleaned my brush, okay, my flat brush, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of dark brown on the corner, just like that, see that? Okay, and we're gonna do just like we did on the body of the cow, only I'm gonna add that dark brown now just under the nose where the lip is. And see when I float it like this, it kind of fades into my paint, right? That's one reason I like to float. It softens that line, okay? But you could outline it and it looks great too. It's just a preference. Um, once I do that, I'm gonna go ahead now and float under the hair to give it a little bit of a shadow there. And this is again optional, just if you want to. Add those sh the shadows there. These are all just things we teach you and you can play with your painting and do what works for you, you know? If you prefer not to do it, it's not, not necessary. Okay, and then with your um, nostrils here, I float or you can just kind of brush in a little bit of that darker shade of brown around it. Okay, just like that. So I just go around it with that darker shade before I paint them in. See, I'm just brushing that dark brown around it. Again, gives it that dimension. There we go, just like that. And see, it does change the color a little bit, right? It's still, um, in between the color of the cow's body and the hair, but it just changes it slightly whenever you float or outline. So does it for you. Okay, now we're gonna let that dry and we're gonna do the same thing on the hair now. I have my flat brush and I'm going to put a little bit of that dark brown on the corner of my brush. I'm starting from the outside in. So I'm gonna start here on the outside of the hair and just float along the edge there. And if it's not, if your paint isn't dry yet, that's even better, right? I just saw something I forgot. And you probably saw it before me because most of our artists do. I didn't paint the inside of my ear right here and that needed to be painted in when I did the nose because it's the same color. So I'm gonna go back really quick here. We need that painted in, okay? I do apologize. I tend to do this a lot. And our little artists like, Miss Sarah, you forgot something. Mm, kind of important. So this is the same shade as my nose. So if you wanna go back and paint that with me right now, or maybe you saw it and you already did it. I mean, that happens a lot. If you did, great, good job. I'm gonna just paint it in real quick, but it's the same shade as my nose. And then when I do my nose, <laughs> I float or outline the inside of it with the brown, just like that. And see how I just went right into floating with my paint already wet? That's typically what I do. I like to do it while my paint's still wet. So if you wanna do that, you can do that with me. I just rinsed my brush again. I'm going back to my hair, okay? We're gonna go right back to where we were. Just had to, to pause and make sure that was done. There, and it's done. We're good now, okay. So now let's go back, finish our floating on our hair. So start on the outside and work your way in. And I don't float um, every single strand on both sides, okay? Uh, the only ones I do the both sides on are the ones that are here in our background that come out away from our cow. And the reason I do that is it gives it a natural outline so it doesn't get lost in the yellow, okay? Otherwise, I just float one side. So I'm gonna bring this one up, just like that. Float that side up. And then the rest of it, I'm just gonna start following. So this is, if you've lost your line, this is how you're gonna do it, okay? So you have this strand of hair here, right? It's coming down on the nose. Okay, and if you're not sure where to go, you're just gonna follow it like this, so you're gonna follow it up in the direction of that hair, 
up like that. See, I just followed it right on up. And I curve it out a little bit, just like that, okay? So if you've lost where to go, keep in mind you can go in the direction that your hair is. So this as well, let's see, this here comes up right in the middle. And again, I'm following it in the direction that my hair is lying. So you can just follow me if you can no longer see the outline. There's always options, okay? So that there, and then let's see. This here, just so you can see it. See how it comes up on the other side right there, okay? So if you've lost it, there you go. It just comes right up. And then we're going to do another little layer. It's so this one here, curves around and connects. Now we gotta do the other side where that hair is lying up here. Okay, so this one comes up and I just follow it up. Here's the other one. It sits right on the nose. And I do them all different lengths. So some of them go all the way up to the flowers. You can bring them all the way up or you can just stop halfway and leave it. Totally up to you. Okay, now this little strand here, right, it's kind of tucked. So I have one that's coming up here and connects just like that. It just kind of connects to that one and gets tucked behind. And it comes up on the other side. Let's see. So it's as if it's just kind of laying there and let it fade out like that. Okay. And you can see none of these are perfect because this is hair. Not supposed to be. You have different shades happening. Okay. Now this one here, I'm just going to bring it up. Kind of tucks away there. We're almost to the end. So this one's kind of in our background. So that's why I outlined that one too. It's kind of in our background. So I'm going to do both sides of it. I'm going to come down and do that side and go back up and do the other side so it doesn't get lost in my yellow. Okay. Just like that. Now, let's see. You can, if you want to, you can outline the bottom of the ear over here. It's a little extra. Okay. And you can also separate this hair if you want more strands. So there's lots you can do. You can just leave that one strand. You can separate it into a couple over there. Whatever you're feeling. It's the fun thing with this hair is you can do what works for you. I'm gonna fill that in. There we go. Separate it a little bit for you. See that? But just remember you have you have leaves right here. They're gonna be covering a lot of that. So you're just putting this here so you have options later with your leaves, but it's probably not even gonna show. You gotta remember that too. Okay, now we have this little strand over here all on its lonesome. It needs to not be forgotten. So I'm gonna just make sure I float the edge of that one. Just like that. Let's see, I didn't do a lot of floating around the nose on this one, but you can if you want. I just did that edge so it wouldn't get lost. And there you go. Now you have your low lights on. So I'm gonna rinse my brush. Rinse, rinse. We're gonna add the highlighting later, okay? Right now we're just gonna let that dry and we're gonna do our black. Let's let the cow dry so we can work on our flowers and leaves in a minute. And let's put in our, our horns. And I'm just using straight black. If you want to, though, you can mix in brown with it. If you want to change the shading a little bit, you can have some fun with it. But I'm just using that black and filling in my horns. And I curve them out just a little bit. If you start from the corner of your canvas and you pull down and try not to pick up that brush, you'll 
get a nice edge to that horn. Okay, fill it in. And with our black, we do tend to get those pockets, so you really have to make sure you get enough paint on your brush to fill that in. Okay, and come along the hair here. And up. And I don't worry too much about perfecting those edges because I am gonna outline, but if you're not gonna outline, take your time to clean them up right now with your brush. Okay, I'm gonna go do my other side, follow it around. And your paint should make it all the way around. If you have enough water in it, you should be able to fill that in without picking up your brush, but obviously I need more water in my paint. Okay, I'm gonna come around my flower petals. Really wanna make sure I come around those because black is hard to cover. So I am gonna try and be careful there, but just remember you can always cover. So there are ways. It's just a little trickier with black. So I do try my best not to paint inside my flowers as much as I can. Okay, and then this little petal peeks up, but a little bit of that horn is showing through. So I'm going to finish that out just like that. And now you're done. I'm going to rinse my brush and switch now to my detail brush because while we're doing black, we're going to, or doing using black, we're going to go to our nostrils here. And you're going to go ahead and paint those in with a detail brush. I like to outline them first. Just like this. I outline and then fill them in with the black. You can change the shape of these if you wanted to. You just paint right over it with your brown and change the shape. That's totally fine. You don't have to do it this way if you wanna do something else. I've seen so many cute ones. <laughs> Hard to choose what style to go with on these. They're really cute. I fill those in. And remember, they don't need to be perfect shapes or anything. Because it's a nose, you know? And, and I imagine she's moving and not standing perfectly still here. So I like to remind myself of that. That when you're painting animals or anything in nature, you can remove that perfection. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush. And now that all that's painted, we get to start our flowers. So I am now going to use either a small flat or my number six round brush for flowers. I do typically like using a round brush when I'm filling in flowers, but I'm gonna show you how to float today. So I'm gonna use a small flat and show you how to float these flowers. But you can use a round one too, that works great. So I'm gonna use my small flat and choose my flower colors whichever color you want to do i'm going to do a light pink and a light turquoise for mine so i'm using a lot of white but i'm going to pick up some white here that i haven't contaminated right with color and we're going to start on our two outside flowers first i'm going to mix my pink and my white together to get that shade that i want and it's a really light pink just like that we're going to do our petals first and even though um, you can't see the petals when you're doing this, you always want to paint in the direction your petals are lying. So even though I can't see my petals perfectly, I am going to paint them as if I could. Okay, because that gives me a natural outline for my petals. So I'm always going to do that anyway. I'm just going to come around and See how I'm curving my brush? So you start at the center, okay? And we'll do it together here. So you're starting at the center, brushing out, turning your brush in a smile shape and coming back down. Let's do it again, okay? So I'm starting at the center, I'm coming up, curving my brush in a smile shape and coming back down. And I'm gonna do it on all of these. I do like to paint into my center flower a little bit, just like that, to make sure I get the shape of my petal right. Always trying to
to paint in that direction. So now let's go do it up here at the top one the same way I'm starting at the center, coming up, curving my brush and pulling back down. So it's all in the wrist. But it's really good to practice this motion for if you want to float these petals with me later. But you can always outline the petals and that's just fine too. Okay, both, both work great. But here we go, I'm gonna curve my petals again, pull it back down, and I'm doing that on each one. And once you get that motion, it goes pretty fast. You just kinda of have to practice, and you can practice on a plate if you wanted to first. If you have our kit, you can follow our outline. It's a great guide. Our paint kit will act as a really good guide for you with doing those petals. Now all those petals are done, I'm gonna rinse my brush, and we're doing the same thing with the center one. And now that those are clean, I'm going to take white, put it here, and add a little bit of turquoise until I get that really light shade of turquoise, just like that. Okay, and then we're going to come up here and do our petals the same way. I'm curving and pulling back down. Okay, start at the base, curve, pull back down. And some petals are bigger than others, right? That's perfect. They shouldn't all be the same. They should all be a little bit different. Okay, curving, pulling back down. I'm going to do another one here. I'm just going to fill them all in all the way around. Now, when you come to the pink, if you got any pink in your petal, then wait just a minute because your pink will turn into a beautiful purple. It's one of our favorite purples, but if it's still wet right there, you will get that beautiful shade of purple and lose your um, turquoise. But there we go. We have all that in and ready and it's drying. While that middle one is drying, I am now going to go back to my pink ones if they're dry. I'm going to fill them here. They should be good to go. They are good to go. Okay. If yours aren't good to go yet, that's okay. Give them just a minute to dry. Okay. I'm going to show you how we're going to float those edges or use a detail brush, which is this one here, and use your dark pink to outline your edges. So if I were to do an outline instead of floating, I would put a some of that dark pink, I can't talk on my detail brush. And I would then do my edges like this with my detail brush. And see, that not that cute? Okay, so that works great too. All right, but I'm going to float. And so I'm putting that pink back on my brush, just like that. I've made sure my bristles are damp. You don't want them really dry. And then I'm gonna put that dark pink on the corner, just like that, see how it's on the corner? Okay, and I'm going to now put that pink on the outside edge where I just showed you to outline and follow it around my petal, just like that. And you can see how it outlines it as well, but it's just a softer outline. So it's just different preferences. It's just whatever works best for you. Okay, so as I'm outlining, I'll pick up my brush. I'll go around about halfway. I'll pick up my brush and I'll come up from the bottom again and meet it. So always go from the center circle of your flower. I'll brush out, curve it almost in a hook, right? Reload my brush sometimes if I feel like it needs more paint and then come back, pulling away from the center again on the other side to meet, just like that, okay? But that, st that helps separate your um, petals so they look like they're all on their own. They're their individual petal and they're not all together, right? Okay, so then I've come around and now I'm gonna pick up my brush and go back the other direction to meet it, just like that. And it goes, it goes fairly quickly once you get that pattern down. You can either outline those petals or just float each one like this. And it's okay if they touch. And if some of that paint gets mixed into the petal just makes it even prettier because each petal will have a slightly different look and I love that. Now that I've painted the blue on there, I'm not going to go into the blue again on that petal 
but now I already have the um, outline for my petal. You know, we know where it's going, so I don't need to. All right, so now I'm gonna come around here and fill in the side of that one. And I mean, if you wanna get technical, you can put a center, whoops, center little piece. I picked up the blue, see? There we go. You can put a little bit there to show where that petal meets in the middle under your blue petal. Okay, now let's go do our other flower. That one's done. Same thing, start at the center. Just gonna wrap it around each petal. And again, I'm gonna separate it right there. It's meeting the blue. Do each one. Up, halfway. If you can make it all the way around, you can. Usually I need to reload my paint, but sometimes I get lucky and I get a good consistency on my brush and I don't need to. But see how light that one is? I want it a little darker, so I'm going back over it. So you get to just kind of play with your colors and decide what you like best for your flower. If you want it to be lighter or darker. You can also, one thing I love doing is turning my canvas upside down because then, and see mine is starting to blend too much and I don't wanna lose my pink. So I rinsed my brush. I'm gonna put more pink on it like this and then put that darker shade back on just so I don't lose it. So if you start to lose all of your dark shade, you can do that and fix it. But I do like to put my paint, turn my paintings upside down when I'm painting these and get all those petals going the right direction, making sure they all fit the right way. It helps a lot when you're creating pieces to make sure everything's lying the right way as they should. Okay, there we go, one more petal. All the way around. This one got a little too much water on it. So it's too light for me. So I'm gonna add more pink to my brush and go back over it in a minute. But it's, it's getting close. If I get too much water on my brush, then all my colors get a little too light for me. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush now. Let that dry a minute. I might add some more pink to the edge of those when they dry. But I'm gonna go ahead and start my turquoise. And again, you can outline it, okay? You can outline this one too, if you want to, with a detail brush. Or you can float it with me, and I'm floating it the same way, only I'm putting dark turquoise on the corner of my brush. And then I'm gonna follow that outside edge of my flower all the way around. Same thing as I did with my pink one. And give each petal that nice dark shade of turquoise. There, try that again. Here we go. Got to make sure I load that brush up so it gives me that good float along the edges. And these petals are bigger, so usually I use a brush that's just slightly bigger for these. It helps, but we're good. Okay, here we go. We're going to do our next one here. Comes up around the pink flower. Float my edges. It's just kind of pretty because your flower can still be really soft, but each petal can be separated by a darker shade without taking away from that light flower look that we want, you know, those light daisies. Here we go all the way around. Okay, a few more here. And again, turn your canvas. Sometimes it's nice to turn our canvas. It gives us a better perspective. And makes it easier when we're painting these petals. Okay. And you can see I'm finishing each petal because even though you have one side done, if you don't complete it, it doesn't separate it properly. So I do like to finish a petal even though it's not really necessary. It gives it some shadow and it separates it, makes it its own. Okay, so there we go. 
Just making sure my paint is all covered on those petals. I like it. They're so cute. There we go. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush. We're gonna let those dry just a minute. Okay, and then we'll do our center. But before I do um, the center, I wanna make sure I get my leaves in. So you're gonna mix color for leaves. And with these flowers here, now that they're dry, I'm gonna go back and see I can put my outline in now. But if, you're, if you have too much water in your paint, it becomes a watercolor, which is beautiful. But you do kind of get that watercolor look instead of that deep, rich color that we want on our flowers. I don't want it too washed out. So now I'm gonna rinse my brush and let those petals dry before I do the center of my flower. I don't want um, to mix that color into my center. If you wanna do um, a dark pink center or a dark turquoise center, you can do that. If you're doing it light yellow like me, let it dry a minute. Okay, let's mix our green leaf color. Okay, and to make the leaf color, you need to mix some turquoise here with some yellow. I'm gonna mix those together first, okay, and get that shade. You're gonna get like a, a limey, a limey green shade here, right? Then I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it, and you'll see that shade change pretty quick. So it gets lighter. And this is where you get to just mix until you love the shade of green. You get the shade you want for your um, leaf color. It can be dark, it can be really light, it can be more of a pastel green if you lose, use a lot of white. But I love giving you the option to mix your own green because everyone sees color a little different. And maybe your green is different from mine. Another thing you can add to it is brown. So if you want more of um, a foresty green, you can Grab a little bit of brown up here and mix it in there. That's really pretty too. So there's lots of options here. Keep mixing till you love it. I think I'm good with this shade right here. Okay, and the first thing we wanna do before we do leaves is we want to put our stem on so we know where we're going to be placing our leaves. So I'm grabbing a detail brush now. Make sure you put it in water and rinse it out. Okay, well, let's get some of that green on our detail brush and let's create ourselves a stem for our leaves. Okay, my first stem, so you can see if you have our pattern, you have the first leaf to add, act as a guide. Okay, and all you're going to do with this first leaf is connect the stem from the center of your flower up just slightly. You're going to curve it in a smile shape, just like that. That's it. Okay. And then I have one other leaf that just branches off slightly. So I'm gonna create a V shape on my stem, just like that, okay? And you can, you can make this bigger if you want or smaller. This is a personal preference. Now you have two leaves on the other side if you have our paint kit, okay? And this is gonna act as your guide for your stem. Your stem comes right between those two leaves. So it's gonna start again at the center of these two petals gonna come down, connect to that leaf, and then connect to the second leaf, see that? And you're just gonna pull it down in a smile shape as well, pointing towards the cow, okay? So we wanna kinda of wrap it towards the cow. And just like that, and that's it for the stem. All of our leaves are going to connect to that. So I make sure I have a nice dark stem on there, and you're ready to go. Now you can use your um, number six round for leaves or you can use a small flat brush. They both work great. So I'm gonna show you how I create my leaves. First, let's start at the very tip here, okay? And to do a leaf, you point as far as you want that leaf to go. So I'm gonna have it just under my canvas. It's kind of lining up with my horn here. And to make a leaf, I create a smile with my brush. See how there's a smile there? And then I connect it with a rainbow on top, just like that. That is my leaf shape, okay? And everyone's will look very different. But that's my leaf shape. I already have my center there, but I'm gonna fill it in with some green, just like that. Beautiful. We're gonna do the same thing here, 
connecting to this branch. And it can be as big as you want. I kind of made this one bigger than the last one. But again, I did my smile. And then I'm going to connect it with another smile and fill it in. Beautiful. Now let's do this one here. If you have our kit, it's already traced for you. It's also a good warm up piece. You can start there if you want to and practice. Because see again, it's the same shape. You're just connecting your smile and your rainbow and then filling in the center. It's such a fun and simple way to create leaves. And now I'm gonna do the same here. And you do, you have this one already done or traced on for you if you have our kit so you can practice there. I'm doing my rainbow and connecting it with a smile. Just like that and then filling it in. So you can practice there. And this one here is already going right off the canvas. So I'm just gonna fill it in. But I did the same shapes. And then we have one big one here and it's right at the very edge of our um, branch there. Branch, what's the word? Stem, there's the word. Okay, so I've created my smile and now I'll connect it with another one. Just like that and then we'll paint the middle. Perfect. Once you get that down, leaves are just so fun and simple. And then I have this little space here, so I just filled it in with one more leaf. You can leave it if you want to. I just like to fill the space sometimes. So I'll just put another little leaf in there. So I just added one more, and it can be as big as you want it to be. It's just kind of disappearing off our canvas. Okay, now before it dries, I've got my brush full of green, right? We're gonna add a highlight. First, I want you to add more green to one side of your leaf before you add the highlight, okay? Give it one more layer of green, just like that. And I'm gonna show you a really easy way to give yourself a highlight, but just make sure you have that green on there because sometimes green is transparent as well, right? can see through it but we're gonna finish up these leaves before we move on so I have my brush full of green still like this and I'm just gonna put a little bit of white on the very tip of it like that and then for my highlighting I'm gonna start at the very top of my leaf and just pull it down see that pull it down start at the top pull down towards your stem or you can go from your stem whatever is easier on one side of your leaf. So choose the side that you feel like the sun may be touching your leaf and pull that light white around that top part. So I'm, I chose the top of my leaves or what I envision is the top of my leaves. And again, I'm just putting white on the very tip of my brush. Okay, just like that. And pulling that white right across the top. And if you do this while your green is wet, even better, because it fades into your green a little bit more. And it's a little more forgiving. You can add or take away however much you want. I'm gonna add it here. So you can see some are brighter than others, right? Just depends on how much you want on there. But isn't that pretty? Just adds that. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a little bit on the very tip of it and add a center to my leaf. And I always try to add it while my paint is still wet. This is drying on me. But I wanna just add a little bit of a center and usually it'll fade into my green slightly if it's still wet. That's what I want. I don't want it to look like a super harsh line. So I like doing it when my, while my green's wet. So I'm going into it pretty quick here and that's why just want to give the illusion that it's there without a lot of work, you know? And some can be darker than others. It's just up to you. There you go. But now we have the centers done and we're ready to finish. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush now. Our leaves are on there. And now you're just gonna paint the center and we're highlighting and you guys did it. So. Mix the color you want for the center of your flowers. I am going to use a small flat. You can use a detail brush 
whatever works for you. I'm going to mix this really light yellow I used for my background for the center of my flowers. And I'm using a lot of white. I want it really light, really light, okay? So I'm using a lot of white with just a little tiny bit of yellow. It's mostly white. Okay, so I've got it on there. I've gotta make sure my brush is really clean because I see that color coming through. Okay, so there we go. Got my really, really light, light shade. I even want it lighter than that. It's almost white. There we go. Okay, with just a touch of yellow. And then we're gonna do the centers of all of our flowers. I just spin my brush in a circle. You could outline it if that's easier for you. Okay, I'm just gonna come here to the center, spin my brush in a circle. I like to do it that way. Miss Cami does it slightly different and both ways are cool. She does a half moon like this and then she connects her circle with one on the bottom, just like that. See, she does it. She connects two moons or two C's together and that works really awesome too. So you can either spin your brush or pick it up and do that. So you decide what works. Circles are tricky. They just take a little bit of time. I have a drip happening. I'm trying to save it. There it is. There we go, I got it. Okay. So let's let that dry for just a minute and do our highlighting. Okay. I'm gonna rinse my brush real quick. Okay, I'm gonna grab my detail brush. And um, one thing you can add to your flowers real quick before we do our highlighting, if you want to, you can take your dark shade of turquoise and put these little lines up the center of your flower. One thing to keep in mind is to always curve them if you can, okay? So it kind of goes in the direction of your petals instead of just straight. I always try to curve them a little and have one shorter than the other. So there's not an exact pattern happening. And if you want to have them both the same, you know, that's, that's totally fine. I'm just gonna try and have one longer than the other as I go and curve them a little bit. Okay, so this is an extra little detail you can add if you want. You can even take the time if you want to, to outline your flowers with a darker shade but that floating that you did really does that for you. You don't necessarily need to come through and outline your flowers. That is something you can do though, if you prefer them to be a little darker. Okay, so you can take the time to just go around each flower and add even more shading to them. Remember every layer just adds more to your painting. So, Every layer is just awesome. The more you wanna do, but then you just have to remember <laughs> to stop <laughs> because I will keep going sometimes until I really should have stopped, you know. I need to know when to be done. Okay, so I'm going to do the dark pink as well on the flowers, same thing. But with the, um, with the side flowers, I didn't do two lines. I just did one up the center but I slightly curved them as well. You can see I just did one right up the center of each of those. So it's faster if you just go around there. Got a little water in that. And again, you can take the time to separate your petals and make them all darker if you want to. I didn't do a whole lot of that because I am going to do a little bit of outlining for a shadow and that takes care of that for me. But you can go around and add the darker shade too while you're at it. It is really pretty. Giving your petals that shadow. It's really pretty. Just remember to take the time to separate your petals though um, if you're gonna do this to separate them so they're laying on each other really nicely, just like that. Okay, all right, now let's do our highlighting. Just 
didn't want to forget that, you know? Gotta make sure that's happening. I think our center petals are almost dry. Let's let them dry just a little more maybe. I'm gonna let mine dry just a little more. We'll come back to them. And let's do our highlighting on our cow. So I'm gonna float this. You can use a detail brush if you want to. I'm gonna float it. So I'm gonna take my flat brush and put some white on the corner like this, okay? And then I'm going to first float the top of my horns with some white. See that? It just helps them stand out a little bit. Any chance we have to add light to our painting, we do. Because it just really helps it pop. In our opinion, right? It's something we like as artists, but not everybody does. So I'm going to add light there. I'm gonna add just a little bit to the top of my ear as well. Okay. And then I'm gonna add some to the side of my cow here, just to draw attention to her like that. And before I do the hair, I'm gonna do the nose, okay? And I'm gonna focus on the outside of my nose. I don't know if you've ever noticed a cow's nose, okay? Because as I was creating this, I really got to know a cow's nose. They are very wet, right? Okay, always, always wet. I found that too. I don't think I saw one cow that didn't have a wet nose. So this light is focused on the outside of the nose to give that illusion, okay? So that's why I did all of the light focusing there. You don't have to do that. I just, I thought it was funny. It's something I just, I, when I'm creating late at night, I find things funny. And I added this light to the outside of the nose all the way around for that reason. So you can do that or not add so much. <laughs> you can do less. But I'm gonna come all the way around the cow's nose here, giving her that light all the way around. There we go. So I'm gonna finish it off right along here. Give a little more there by the mouth. And up. There we go, okay. And if you feel like it's too much, and you don't want that much, just put more brown on your brush and take it off. Either way, it works. All right, so we've got our nose done. Now we're gonna add a little bit of light to the bottom part of the lip, yep. Um, you can also brush some here in the center, you know, cause she has a wet nose. So I like to brush a little bit of light there too. And then we're gonna add some to the bottom part, just slightly of her lip there. If you want. Oh, I got black, great. Don't want that. Do not want that. That's the opposite of what you want. I'm gonna rinse my brush. Take that off. And grab some black in my brown, probably because my plate's dripping everywhere. Fix that. Yeah. Take the black off. Okay. There we go. Oh my gosh. Oh my word, I'm a messy painter. Okay, let's try that again. Put some white on your brush. I'm gonna float that. There we go. Let's put that back on there. Because we lost it. Or I lost it, maybe you didn't. I did, because I'm messy. Okay, I'm gonna put that back on. And then you're gonna do the same, we're gonna do the same with our hair. So once that nose is on there, the way I like, which I think I got it finally, okay. There we go. And then a little down there. Okay, let it dry, and let's do the hair. So I'm going to rinse my brush, because I got black in it, and I don't want that anymore. And let's just put a little white on our brush like that, same thing. And you're just gonna highlight the hair, because you already got the low lights on. So now I'm just gonna bring that light into my hair. And I'm following each of my curls. So I'm just brushing down 
See that? Just right along my curls. Um, yep, every single one. Anywhere you add a low light, you can add a highlight. Just like that. Then it makes your hair really stand out. There we go. Go along there. Get our top one here. And, yep. Look how much it makes that hair just pop though when you add that light to your hair. It's really necessary, you know? It's everything. And I'm gonna add some right here to that corner as well. And you can brush a little bit in here. You just gotta be careful because it gets away from you, right? I think I got it all though. I'm checking to make sure I didn't miss one. It's so cute, just like that. I think we're good. I think I have a little bit there if you want to. Mm-hmm. I like it. Okay, now while your brush still has that white on this bottom part, or maybe you're using a detail brush, okay? I'm gonna come to the top of your flowers and float white along the top, just like this on each one. Make sure you have the light on the top. And then you're gonna put yellow on the bottom of your brush or your detail brush, and you're gonna put a smile on the bottom of each flower. Isn't that cute? That gives your flower that shading without you working too hard. And just makes that center pop a little bit. So just like that, voila. Okay, the last thing you've got to do, if you want to, is your outlining, okay? But if you're done and you like it just like this and you don't want to outline, just take the back of your brush, get a little, we call it our chocolate chip, okay? And I put these fun little dots all around. It just adds light to our painting. You can come into your flower or just stay out around the flower. But I kind of see them as almost like dew drops or something, you know? And I just love how they add light to our painting and also fill any negative space. And you can have bigger dots, you can have smaller dots, just depends on how hard you press with your brush. I got one over here and I put some coming down in the flowers. I have some around, just anywhere. So it looks like they're just kind of falling down we go and I try to keep them in clusters of close together you know and I my go-to is always clusters of three so you could do three or more there we go there and then I have some just filling this space right under the leaf I think that's all of them but you know what I could just keep going so you can add as many as you want to that space Okay, so at this point, I'm going to outline. You can sign your name and call it good because it's really cute just the way it is. Or you can add water to your black with me, grab a detail brush, and thin out that black. You want it to be the consistency of ink, okay? So I'm really gonna thin it out here. And mix and mix, I've, I've done about four drops of water so far into my black because it takes quite a bit to thin it out. And once I get it, I'm gonna start at the top just so I don't smear my paint as I go, okay? And I added anywhere I imagine there's a little bit of a shadow, I added an outline. So if I have a leaf up here that might be sitting in the shadows just a little bit, I added a light outline to the bottom. It's like that, again, not necessary. This is where uh, Miss Sarah just keeps painting. And she adds and adds and adds and doesn't need to. Well, that's what I do, okay? So I've got my shadow there, and I did the same with the petals. So I have these petals 
where some of them I imagine are in the shadows. So I'm going to add a little bit of my black around the flowers where they might be sh casting a shadow. So I'm going to go around those. And then I have one here. It also separates them just a little bit, right? So your petals are slightly separated all the way around here. And you can see I focus my outlining on the bottom of my flowers rather than the top. Okay, and we've got a couple here. Hello. Someone honked at us. And come around this side and up. So we have a little bit there and one more shadow just right there where I feel like it's casting a little bit. And you can put a little smile under the center of your flowers. Right? Cute. All right. And then the same with our. Um, leaves here anywhere I fill it might be casting a shadow so on this leaf here and then one more so if I put the highlight on one side I'm gonna add the shadow on the other right and there we go so we have the top part done so now I'm just going to outline my cow any little thing inside of the ear right where it's folded there and then our hair. So you can have some fun with this. You can separate any hair strands you want to with the black, but you did that with a lot of that with your low light, so with your brown. So that's why a lot of our artists will do that with the brown and then they don't outline. So I'm gonna come all the way out here I'm adding more water to my black because it's starting to seize up on me again. This It's key for you to be able to outline, to have that nice inky consistency with your black. So something to remember. You should be able to do a nice long brush stroke without it breaking on you. Just like that. Mm, this one's lower, okay. This one's higher. There we go. And I'm trying to um, not have that pattern with my black. I want all of my brush strokes to be different lengths, some of them higher than others, right? So if I need to raise a line, I will. There we go. I'm going to separate these right here. Hmm, I'm gonna come up, not too far on that one. I just don't wanna smear it reaching over here. I'm really good at smearing my paint. There we go. And this one curves just a little bit and meets up with it, just like that. Then we have a little piece that just kind of breaks off there. And you can separate it here if you want to, or just leave it. And then we have our little hair here. It floats out away from the head. Cute. So there you go. Now with our head, I'm just gonna swivel my brush there. You don't need to have a straight line, right? And come down the body a little bit. Cute, okay. Let's do our nose and our mouth. So I'm gonna just kinda brush around the nose here. And with the mouth right there, you can do a thicker line if you want to look like her mouth is open a little more. And then I'm gonna gently come around here, but not too much, because again, I want that white highlight to show up. I really like it. And then I do just a little bit here. I don't go all the way across, just like that. 
Oh my gosh, I love it so much. It's so cute. I think I got everything. I'm making sure, but I'm pretty sure I got everything. She looks pretty cute to me. So I'm gonna sign my name, find a little spot. I hope you are so proud of yourselves and had fun painting with me. Be sure to sign your name, take ownership in your art because we all create differently and every artist should sign their work, right? Even if it's a smiley face, leave your mark. All right, thanks for painting with me. I hope you've loved painting this Highland cow with me. Please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial and come back for more. We'll see you next time, bye-bye.